Hi everyone, welcome back to Let's Do Bonsai. As you can see from the sign behind me, we're at uh, Linney Lockside Holidays. So this is uh, Loch Linney that this is sat on. Um, and somebody here really likes their trees. Um, and I've got a bit of a sneaky suspicion that they may also be into bonsai or some other form of uh, plant you know, propagation going forward because I've spotted a few uh, air layers and ground air layers and all sorts of things going on. Um, it's relatively peaceful around here. Uh, as you can see, there's lots of old trees. Um, but within the grounds, somebody's placed a, uh, a lot of plaques explaining what the trees are. And a lot of them are our favourite bonsai trees that we have. So, having found this, I'm going to um, take you through the plaques that I can find. There's, there is rather a few, so I'll find as many as I can. Um, but before I do that, the reason that uh, we find ourselves here on Loch Linney is this is around the area where they did the Harry Potter series um, and some of the train uh, scenes or pretty much all of them I suppose were uh, set around this area and it just so happens that this train line is the line that the uh, Harry Potter train goes down so the other day we were stood here and the train came trundling down the tracks. I managed to capture it on my phone and here it is. So that was pretty cool, that's the train from Harry Potter. Let's just get over this bridge and out of the way. But as I say, uh, people here seem to love their trees. The grounds works is absolutely fantastic. Um, the entrance, as you can see, is a nice entrance. And you can see straight away that the trees are nice and well looked after. Um, and I quickly spotted an air layer that's happening just over there. And lots of nice little trees happening. And one of the first things I noticed was a sign. And this is obviously telling us what it is. So this is a Chinese red birch growing in nature doing really well and uh, what they've done is they've given us some information about the Chinese red birch uh, the Betula albicinensis from the mountains of China live up to 140 years uh, cool fact pioneer species soil uh, improverable to grow in extreme conditions uh, birches were first trees to colonise Earth after the Ice Age. Well, that's a rather cool fact, and I wonder how many people knew that, that birches were the first trees to colonise the Earth after the last Ice Age. That's pretty cool. And then there's lots of other plaques all the way around the site. I'll take you around as many as I can, like I say, but we won't <clears throat> have the walk in between them all. Um, yeah. There's a monkey puzzle tree, that's just in there. I've never seen anybody do a monkey puzzle tree bonsai. I don't think I'd like to try it myself. Uh, but the monkey puzzle tree, I'll let you read the uh, the name for that. Aurora caria, Aurora canna, or something like that, <laughs> can live up to 2,000 years. And they uh, originate from the Andes Mountains, Chile, Argentina. 
they're a survivor from the Jurassic era, 200 million years ago, developed spike-like needles. Let's see if we can get as protection from grazing dinosaurs. So it's, uh, yeah, so a monkey puzzle tree, it, it stops the monkey climbing it and eating its fruit, but uh, it originally started creating its spine-like needles for uh, protection from grazing dinosaurs. How cool. So we parked up the other day and I spies this little black case and it looks like somebody's doing a bit of an air layer. So good luck to them with that. Hopefully that comes off. And there's a few more dotted around the edges that I've seen. So good luck to whoever's trying those air layers. So there's a couple of plaques coming up on these trees in front of us. And as you can see, these will have been here a long, long time, these trees. Well, well, well established. So this first one is a European beech, uh, a Fagus sylvatica lives up to 400 years um, come from central european plains first div discoveries about communication and social complexities from hidden life in trees so that's where we talk about the um the fungus underneath the original uh, network uh, where they can communicate across with trees next to them and around them and the more well-established trees can feed struggling trees that are around them or communicate to each other that um, there's some sort of disease or people coming, not people, insects etc coming to feed on them so they can start their uh, protection against it. So there's a lovely tree here, Thuya placata, placata, the western red cedar, uh, one for Nigel here I would say, from the Pacific coast of Canada and the USA. Um, the leaves, the plates, are used for essential oils as a natural insect repellent. And these trees can live for four and a half thousand years. And as you can see, this one's been here for quite a while. Look at the live veins flowing into the ground. Absolutely wonderful. Really, really nice. There's a bit of dead bit inside there. You can get inside the tree. That's pretty cool. And as we look up, there's new growth coming all off the trunk. So this is a good, healthy thuya. And the, uh, the live veins are flowing into the ground really well. And it looks like it's um, possibly self-seeded a few around, uh, but we've got some random larches and different things all over the place around here. But let's go and see what else we can find. There's another one there with a fantastic root base at the bottom. Beautiful. Looks like a dog's lost its tennis ball just there. I'm sure he'll come and find it later. So straight over here, we have a Chime Paris obtusa, Hinoki cypress. Look at the bark, the flaky bark on there. Absolutely beautiful. All natural. All those stepladder branches all in place. We'd soon get rid of them normally, wouldn't we? These can last up to 150 years. They originate from Japan. And the cool fact on this one is exceptionally long-lasting wood. Some shrines and temples of ancient Japan, which incorporate Hinoki wood, are over 1,000 years old. And we'll just step back and have a look at it. It's a lovely old tree. You can see all the new growth on it. Beautiful. What a lovely tree. I'm rather happy that I came here th for a few days so that they could go on the Harry Potter train. As we're venturing around further, there's another little air layer there. It's more of a ground layer, but it is using one of them air layer balls. And uh, somebody must be intending to uh, try and make a, a bonsai out of that. It doesn't look in good shape. It could do with some water up here, I would imagine. In this bit of waste ground here, it's all rubble. Um, yeah, 
it'd be used to being in bonsai, so that for sure. So as we move across from there, there's another tree coming up. This fellow. Great big colossal tree. And this is a horse chestnut. And uh, there we are. Aeschylus Hippocastinus. Um, it's from the Balkan Peninsula. I hope you can read this. Um, the cool fact is that it gives out conkers, the traditional UK swing and hit game. The goal is to break the opponent's conquer. It becomes so popular that there is a, uh, a world championship which is held in Northamptonshire and that's been since 1965. And they can live up to 300 years. I would have thought they would last a bit longer myself but um, I'm not going to outlive one. Fabulous. See if I can capture him. Yeah. Oh, he's off. It does look a rat on the tail though, doesn't it? Only is there, look, he ain't gone far. It's the tail that put me in there. The body and the way he's holding himself, I'd say squirrel or chipmunk. Yeah, we we were quite chubby, isn't he? He's coming back. Hello little fella. You don't seem very fella be used to people here. I'll have to zoom in to get you, won't I? I saw something else move behind those trees, so there might be like a... You know what? I think it is a rat. I don't like rats. They're clean though, rats. Are they? Everybody thinks they're vermin and all the rest of it because of the history they've got with the Black Death and yeah. stuff like that. But they're... So here we have one of uh, most people's favourites for, uh, for bonsai. Um, the Acer Russian paperbark maple, originating in China, can live up to 150 years. Unfortunately, we haven't got any um, cool information on this one, so we'll just have a quick look up the trunk, and you can see all that paperbark on there peeling off. Looks absolutely spectacular. Just step back, have a look, and that's your paperbark maple in nature. So I've just seen a plaque out of the corner of my eye, I haven't seen this one, and uh, you can just see it there in the grass. Populus nigra, origin from the northwest of Europe, lives over 200 years, it's a black poplar to us, uh, great for wildlife. Um, I can't read what that says. For moths, caterpillars, pollinators, birds, most endangered native tree species in Britain at the moment, with a wild population of only 7,000. And I'm not going to scrape away the rest of that because it's covered in a bit of uh, bird dung. But there you go, a uh, black poplar. And no, we don't see many of those around, so I could understand why they're uh, marked as an endangered tree. But it's a great big huge version of one. Lovely. Let's continue to zigzag our way around the grounds and see how many more we can find. So as I was just walking down the pathway here, just found a giant heather, a tree heather, an Erica arborea. Um, the lifespan of these is unknown, as it says, uh, estimated to last up to about 200 years. And the origin is from Ethiopia, Kenya and Tanzania. And the cool fact on these are they're extremely hard, dense and heat resistant. And the wood is used for smoke pipe making and jewellery. How cool! That's covering a lot of ground, that. Let's carry on. Nearly missed this one as we were walking along. See there, Sorbus occuparia. 
Rowan mountain ash. I do love a mountain ash. Um, they're from uh, northern U Eurasia. Uh, Rowan's old Celtic name, Fid Nandruid, means wizard's tree. The berries are edible uh, when they're out and when they're cooked and they're high in vitamin C. So there you go. And uh, the lifespan of this tree is up to 200 years. That's been there a while. Look at that. Really cool. Glad I didn't miss that one. So I'm just trundling towards this red maple acer. I saw that there was a plaque underneath. What a fantastic specimen. Let's get uh, further in. It's an acer palmatum originating from Japan and Korea, uh, and in Japan the uh, maple is called Autumn Welcoming Tree. Uh, you can fry the leaves in butter and they're popular snack in Japan. How cool! And uh, they can live up to a hundred years. So uh, if you grow one, at least you'll get to see it. But what a fantastic, fantastic show of leaves on the Ace of Palmatum. Beautiful. Just up from that is a cedar, a cedrus deodora. These can last up to a thousand years from the Himalayas. The name originates in ancient Sanskrit, the language meaning the woods of the gods. A Deodor Cedar. It's put out a lot of growth this spring, so it's a good healthy tree. Absolutely fabulous, look at it all the way up there. Fantastic. And then if we continue up, we're spoiled, we've got more. There's this tree here. Looking rather splendid. It's put out lots of growth this year. And this is a uh, Cortadaria silona, the pampas grass. Oh, it's not the tree. It's for the grass. I wondered what I was saying when I said Cortadaria. There you go. So this is the grass. How cool. One of the tallest grass species in the world with razor sharp leaves. Well, we better stay away from them then. <laughs> they come from Brazil, Chile and Argentina. Uh, and they're an unlimited perennial for their lifespan. They'll just keep coming back and back and back. I saw the plaque and assumed it was for the tree. How wrong. Further round, we've got another, another Acer. And this is a platino, Platinoids, the Norway Maple. It's an East Centre Europe, Western Asia tree from its origin. And the cool fact is that it's great for wildlife, moth, caterpillar feed on the leaves, flowers provide nectar and pollen for bees and insects, birds and small mammals eat the seeds. And they can last for 250 years. It looks like it's been here a while and it will probably see me out as well this one. Absolutely fabulous. With that great domed canopy, look at that. Almost perfect in shape. Fantastic. So as we're just walking down this path, we found a Betula. Great big tree. Betula pendula. It's a silver birch. Queen of the woods, symbol of purity and renewal birch, white peeling bark, inspired idea of paper which stimulated the mind to create words and symbols can live up to 150 years. And I'm going to move on because I'm driving this dog absolutely crackers. So I nearly walked past this one. This is a corkscrew hazel, the Corylus avalana, the contorta type tree. Um, these can last up to 80 to 100 years if it's well cut back. Uh, the cool fact there is discovered in the 1860s in Gloucestershire as part of a hedgerow with its striking appearance. First specimens were soon cultivated and the original 
Corilus Contorta is still there today. Oh wow, how cool. And I believe it's part of the Batula family as well. So that's the corkscrew hazel and as you know we've got one of those. And with the natural twists that are in it, you could almost cheat in the bonsai world with that, couldn't you? Lovely looking tree. So we're being spoilt here, we've got three in a row. And uh, we've got the Arizona Cypress here. Um, looks like it's been here a good while. It's uh, starting to show signs of age all the way up, but these can last for 500 years. So probably just needs to see a nice bit of water. It's been very dry. Uh, these originate in Mexico, uh, Southeast USA and uh, the Cypressus arizonica, the Arizona cypress. Hardy tree native to desert region, tolerates happy temperate forest, rainforest, climate of western highlands. So it's in the right place. But this bark is absolutely beautiful. Look at it, just that peeling effect. Fantastic, a great example of the bark on an Arizona cypress. Beautiful. Looks like we're Heading towards a uh, Lawsonia cypress. So, uh, yep, Lawson cypress. These can go up to 600 years. You know that mine's a poor example of a uh, cypress. Um, the cool fact on these is that they're great quality wood for various use. Boat making, aircraft construction, guitar making. Uh, most popular uh, cypress species are for parks and gardens. So. And like I say, these last up to 600 years. And again, some fantastic old craggy bark on this one. Beautiful. Ooh. And then next to it, we've got a blue atlas cedar, Cidrus atlantica. These can last up to 200 years. They come from the Atlas Mountains of Morocco. Uh, the ancient Egyptians used oil from this tree for embalming medicine and cosmetics. There you go, every day's a school day. Fantastic mature bark, beautiful mature tree. And just walk away from it and enjoy its majesty. Really tall, spectacular. Right, let's go and see what else we can find. There's a tree just here that I saw as I was walking down. And I just saw the, the root plane and thought I've got to at least capture that on video. That's a good old, craggly old root plane at the bottom. You can see the roots disappearing down the hill down there look at that old bark and everything we'll see if we can just step in for a slightly closer look fantastic look at that absolutely beautiful all those veins disappearing down into the ground right let's carry on with our discoveries There's one down there, huge tree. It's got a sign. We're going that way anyway. Let's run down and have a look. Great big striking tree. Size of the trunk on that is huge. So this is a Sitka spruce. Picea sitchensis. It's from the Pacific Northwest, USA, Canada. One of the tallest and largest trees in the world, and they can live up to 700 years old. So it'll give the redwood a run for its money almost. But that has been here for quite a while. That's a shot of the tree from the distance, and by the looks of it, this one hasn't got the same perspective because it's so close to us, but that must be the tallest tree in this close area. 
it might have a competitor there but it's probably the same tree same same variant absolutely beautiful so we're just going to venture down into the play area because I know there's a couple of plaques down here and there's also some lovely trees and lovely root action going on just at the other side of this green field luckily nobody's here so I don't look like a bit of a weirdy with my camera on the go but as you can see there's some good old trees that they've put the uh, playground into and if we just work under here it's a blackbird is it just uh, getting itself some nesting stuff look at the roots on this wow absolutely marvelous there's the blackbird And then everything here has obviously been here for a long time, fully established for every one of us to enjoy. This is the one that's got a sign, Quercus, Quercus rubra, the northern red oak. They can live up to 400 years from Central and East North America, famed for its flaming autumn colours, popular with nesting birds and pollinators. see the bark breaking away at the bottom down here but the veins flowing into the ground marvelous and then I did notice just up here and I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to get across to it there's a tree right in the middle with a big hole in it I'm going to see if I can get across and near it this is a zip line um, I did have a go I'm not going to show you any footage of that because it's rather embarrassing my body careering down this little slide uh, but there is some lovely trees up here as well we'll have a little look see if we can just get as close as we can to that tree in there See it's got a big hole in the trunk and I do think that from the front area we might be able to sneak our way around and in but look at some of these roots coming for these trees wow great big almost like a ribbon root there not quite but a big lifted up root both sides feeding these trees and all these are very similar been here a long long time look at the size of the root the ribbon type root on that one over there we've got to get in and have a look so as we come out of the zip line they've planted some larch some lovely deciduous larix and that seems to be doing really well for them so that's brilliant and as we just work our way around the beach front we should be able to work our way into this forested area i think we can get through bear with me as i trample my way in so I think they've made it where they don't really want people to get in here, which I understand. We're not going to come in and create any mischief, but we are going to look at this. The roots flying left, round, up, down. A great big ribbon type root there. Wow, this is my... So this is all the roots flying around all over the floor i'm not sure how much you got of me coming in so i'm just having another quick look and this is the great ribbon route here that's my foot and this is the top of my leg here this is as far as i can put my hand down and this ribbon route must be three and a half foot above ground level and it shoots out across the ground 
That is absolutely spectacular. So we'll just have a little step over and get to this interesting tree here. All the live bits round the outside, still feeding the tree, and then the dead centre has become exposed and is rotting away. A bit like the ones that you see in the giants in Nottingham at Sherwood Forest. All the inside rotting away and eventually it will create like a chimney up through the top. You can see the calloused edges of the live veins that are still growing and still feeding this, well, spectacular tree. Absolutely beautiful. The midges are out. We need to uh, get out of here and start working our way back up towards base and pick up as many trees as possible on the way. Oh, wowzers, look at that. We'll just step out into the view that we have of the lock. And these places in Scotland like this, there's not much that can match it around the world. There are places, I know there are, but this is all rather spectacular. People out on the boats fishing. Marvellous. Right, let's go and find another plaque. So as we're mulching back round to head back towards the other side of the site, we found another one, a common juniper. That's a big old beast, isn't it? Can live up to 700 years from the world's northern hemisphere. Uh, the only woody plant that covers almost the entire globe in Himalayas creating the highest tree line on earth at an altitude of 5,000 meters. Uh, key botanical for gin making. There you go, juniper gin. And this is a big old specimen of a juniper. Be interesting to get some air layers off that. That's the Acer palmatum we saw earlier, so we walked up there and we've gone all the way around and we've come back up. And look at that, we were stood next to one. We're going to carry on and see if we can find some more. So this is the launcher for the boats. This is where they've been going on the paddleboard and stuff and I just thought I'd bring you down here for another nose at the lock. and. Uh, this was carved using a chainsaw. Thought you might appreciate that. It's a shame that uh, didn't get a dog by dog. Yeah. Across this stretch of shoreline, there's lots of really shiny stones, and uh, on a on a really sunny day. They uh, really do shine and glimmer, and they look really beautiful. The uh, the rest of the crew are just further around the bend around there, um, down on the beach, they said. Well, they're not down that side where we've come from, so they must be up there. Let's go and see if we can find some more of these plaques. So we're just walking up to this multi-trunk tree that's got a plaque, and as you can see, <laughs> you don't get more well established than that and it's a Leylandi cypress a great big beast of a thing it's been cut back recently by the looks of it uh, it was obviously blocking this walkway um, the lifespan of these is unknown um, they're not present in the wild in, for its or or origin um, a hybrid of a Monterey and Nootka cypress accidentally created in Wales in 1888. It's a super fast growing and able to quickly reach impressive proportions as we can see here. So not been around long enough to really work out how long they can last. 
but I would imagine that's been there for a good couple of hundred years if not a bit more so we're back near base there's not a lot of ground left to cover but there is still a bit of up and down in to do but there's this eucalyptus globulus Tasmanian blue gum believed to live up to about 300 years uh, leaves of the tree used for essential oils in medicine uh, the wood makes best didgeridoo, was that about that? So if you fancy a didgeridoo, you need to make it out of the Tasmanian blue gum. Nice interesting bark, very colourful, lovely. All right, Jack. So we're nearly at the end. We found a couple more around this back edge. <laughs> Good guard dogs doing their job. We've got uh, Chimansi Cypress Pacifera originating in Japan. A uh, cool fact on these is popular handsome conifer cultivated to retain the juvenile blue-green needle-like foliage, which I think most of you know because uh, these are the types of cypress that, uh, that we go for for its small juvenile needles. And that's what we're looking like in nature and as you can see the root base of this this is a uh, fantastic root base very nice right let's stop agitating the dogs and move on so next to that we've got a Sutosuga Menzisi the Douglas fir uh, Oregon pine Pacific coast of North America. Um, cool fact of these is both Latin and English scientific names honour Scottish plant hunters and botanists of the 19th century, David Douglas and Archibald Menzies. So the Douglas fir, if any of you ever wondered where it got its name from, David Douglas is the, uh, the plant hunter from the 19th century and Archibald Menzies lends his name to the Latin name of the Pseudo Suga Menzies I. And these can last for a thousand years. And this one's been here a while looking at the great trunk there with the old bark. Looking really good. And there's the nice soft Douglas fir foliage. See if we can just step back and get a shot of it. They grow really tall. All the way up. Fantastic. Right, let's see if we can find any more before we go back to base. There is another one up round the back there. I'm just going to go round so it doesn't look like I'm going on to people's parts of the park but we'll just get a quick look at the the plaque for it and it's an Alnus glutinosa it's a black alder so it's a swamp della water lover uh, wood of this tough tree doesn't rot when waterlogged instead turning stronger and harder um, Most of Venice is built on all the stacks. Cool. You can live up to a hundred years. So that's the older tree reaching all the way up. Really cool. Some really nice old well-established trees throughout this park and I'm just enjoying myself mooching around having a look at them. It's what we like to see a poly tunnel. Somebody's growing some trees, there's lots of seedlings going on, there's lots of young trees planted throughout the park. They're obviously looking after the future growth of the area and the forest walks that we've got. So there's two more trees just to look at down here. I spotted them on the way up but this wooded area for wild campers I thought there might be a few 
down here. There is a woodland walk down there, but I think the family will probably want to do that at some stage. There's a young Pinus sylvestris there growing and there's just lots of different things happening all over. Some more small pines growing and obviously they're going to take over from the older trees as they become too old and have to come down. Right, let's get up to the last two, which is just through that clearing. So there's two more that I've found, unless we end up stumbling into another one. Uh, this first one is a Salix capria, uh, a goat willow or a great swallow. And uh, they did use willow, as probably some of you know, they used uh, the old bark as a painkiller, and that's a cool fact here, that uh, it can paint a compound called salicin from which aspirin is derived, and sallow supports uh, lots of wildlife through the feed, ch uh, feed chain providing early sources of uh, food for bees. So it's a great tree, it's absolutely fantastic, lasts for about 300 years. But that might be something cool. Um, I have been finding out more information, various different things, and some of the uh, lost towards information of the painkiller from trees and things like that that used to be done in the past. We might uh, see what these different trees do for us or used to do for us. So over here, which might be the last one and a great one to finish on, Pinus sylvestris, the Scots pine, originates from the Scottish Highlands, specimen of globally unique ancient Caledonian pine forests of which remnants still survive in remote highland glens. Scots pine, we all love a Scots pine, up to 700 years old and look at that, the old bark, multi-trunk, shooting skywards all the way up. If that's the last one, that's a great tree to finish on. So this is the shoreline where I believe the uh, lesser spotted Winard and Lund family can be found. I'm going to get down there and join them. So uh, get out there and make the best of the rest of your day. Be kind to each other, animals and the planet. And as always, I will see you again in the next one.